Today I'm going to do a, a demonstration on compression testing. So we're going to do both dynamic and static compression tests. We'll start with a static compression test. And basically what a compression test does is it lets you know um, if there's a cylinder that's not contributing to the firing order. So as the cylinders are going up and down and firing and all that kind of thing, if one of them isn't, isn't working properly, so uh, usually a static compression test will pick that up. So we'll, we'll go from there. The tools that you're going to need to do the job, you're going to need a compression tester. This one actually comes from Mac Tools, but any quality compression tester would be fine. Uh, you can pick these things up just about anywhere. Uh, even the auto parts stores sell uh, decent quality compression testers. Uh, the ones that I've used from Harbor Freight, um, they don't last very long and they're sometimes not very accurate. So I'd kind of steer clear of those, um, but this is a really good quality one. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need something to remove the spark plugs with. So I've got just a straight socket on this extension here. I've also got this socket uh, happens to be made by Snap-on, but there are so, several other manufacturers that make so, uh, sockets like this. It's a double swivel and it comes in really handy for getting the spark plugs that happen to be in really difficult locations. Then we have a top dead center indicating tool, and this is just a piece of plastic here. Um, a pencil would work just fine. Not a mechanical pencil, but a wooden pencil would work okay. Uh, or a wooden dowel, about the same thickness as that. And then this right here is a spark plug installation tool. And I'll demonstrate. So let's go ahead and get started. I forgot to mention that we also need a digital volt ohm meter because the first step in doing a compression test is you've got to check to make sure your battery voltage is good. If you don't have a good strong cranking system, um, you can't do a, a reliable compression test. So this usually comes in part of the P, or MPI. Uh, you would have already checked this when you inspected the vehicle when it first came in. But we're going to go ahead and check it right now. So we'll set the DVOM to DC volts and we're just going to do an open circuit voltage test on it just to see where the voltage is at. And we're at 12.1, which is a dead battery. Um, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put a battery charger on this thing and charge it up before we can go ahead and finish the test. Okay, what I did is I grabbed a uh, external battery and put it on here. So we have uh, a jumper battery hooked up to this one. So we should have enough voltage to do the test now. So let's check the voltage. We're at 12.49, so about 12.5 volts, which is not a completely charged battery, but it's close enough that we can get hurt. The next thing we're going to need to do is to look up service information. We're going to be removing all the spark plugs and there is a possibility that we can get the spark plug wires mixed up. So you want to get the firing order and have it on hand so that it'll be easy to refer to uh, when you put everything back together and you make sure that the firing order is correct. The next thing we need to do is to disable the spark and the fuel. Easiest way to do that on this one is just to unplug the ignition module, which is right here underneath the coils. And there's three, three plug-ins that go to it. So if you unplug all three of those, you've just disabled spark and fuel. Otherwise, you would have to go to the fuse box and pull the ignition fuse and maybe the fuel pump relay and uh, in order to disable the spark and fuel. You don't want the engine to try and start up when you're doing the uh, compression test. The other thing you want to do is block open the throttle plates. And what I've done here is uh, I've just used a screwdriver and gone underneath the the throttle plates are right here. And so what I've done is I've uh, blocked open the throttle plates with a screwdriver just to hold them open. That way you get the maximum amount of airflow into the engine um, while you're doing the test. The next thing you're going to need to do is remove all the spark plugs. To remove the spark plugs in the engine, what you need to do is uh, take the spark plug boot and let me... Uh, adjust the camera angle just a little bit. The best thing to do would be to twist the boot like this because sometimes the boot sticks to the ceramic on the spark plug before you pull it off. Otherwise, if you just grab the spark plug boot and pull, you can pull the, 
little center piece out of the spark plug wire and then you're buying a new set of spark plug wires because they don't sell wires or independently or individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove all six spark plugs in the engine and I will be back when that happens. The last spark plug that I need to pull out is right here. Uh, I've already removed all five of the others. And what I normally do is I like to use a long extension. It gets me away from the engine a little bit, and that way I've got some room to work. My personal ratchet that I use at home is a little bit longer, and it's kind of got an S shape to the handle, which means that you can move the handle up like this, and you can maneuver it like this to get the spark plug out. And it really is handy for doing spark plugs. But this one will work just fine. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the spark plug loose just by giving it a little snap like that and then just run the spark plug out. You have to be careful when you're doing this so you don't break the spark plugs because if you're just doing a compression test, you probably don't want to replace the spark plugs. Another thing that I like to do is to um, keep the spark plugs in order when I pull them out of the engine. That way, if there is an issue, I can see um, the issue with the spark plugs and I can remember what cylinder it's in. So one of the things you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at each one of the spark plugs to make sure they're okay. Now these, uh, these spark plugs did not come out of this engine, but I just wanted to give you a demonstration of uh, um, what that would be like. So for instance, with this one here, see all that brown crud? right here that usually means that there's an oil leak so there's a valve cover gasket or something that's leaking oil and burning onto this the uh, ceramic insulator on the spark plug and then if you notice there's some of these spark plug the the center ins or the center electrode is nice and clean and then some of these the center electrodes not so clean and so that means this one here is running a little bit rich burning some uh, some uh, fuel this one here looks like it's burning pretty much normal. Uh, if it's got a green tint to it, it's probably got some coolant. If it's got some white crusty on it, that's probably oil that's burning. You know, just different things like that. You can determine a lot of how the engine is running just by looking at the spark plugs. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the adapter into the spark plug hole. And so I want to choose an adapter that has the same um, thread as the spark plugs do. If you notice, there's two different thread uh, lengths on this one. Uh, if you, if in doubt, if you don't know, um, always go with a shorter one uh, because you don't want to get one that's too long and have it hit the piston. Um, but it's it's okay to use the one that's about the same size as your spark plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this adapter into the spark plug hole, and it just needs to be in finger tight, just like that. So it doesn't have to be in extremely tight, otherwise it gets jammed and you and you can't. Uh, get it back out. And then with the gauge, it's got just a, a quick connect on it. So we're going to connect up the gauge and then place the gauge on the engine so that we can see it. I've got the gauge hooked up and now we're ready to crank. And what we want to do is we want to crank it over about five or six revolutions. And you just kind of hear the rhythmic pulse of the engine and just count one, two, three, four, five. And you want to do it the same on each one of the cylinders. So I'll show you how that works. Pay attention to the first puff of air and see how much it comes up on that first puff of air. So we'll go ahead and crank it now. And we end up with about 180 PSI. Now to release the pressure, just push this little button right here. And usually I like, to re I like to do this like twice on each cylinder just to make sure that I'm getting a good reading. So I'm going to look at that first uh, puff of air. So we're up to just a little over 180 on that one. And that first puff of air came up right about 90 PSI, which is really, really good. Um, and what you'll want to do is you want to look up the service information and find out what the compression test should be. Most service information will give you compression test numbers. Some won't. So if you can't find any information on it, on an engine like this, between 100 and 150 and, and 180 is really, really good compression. So that's there's nothing wrong with this cylinder right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
record that, that um, pressure and we're going to look at the rest of the, of the cylinders. Here are the specifications for the engine uh, compression on this one. So we want to look up, what I've done is I've gone into ProDemand and I've looked up uh, common specs and procedures, uh, specifications index and un under engine compression this is what it has. So it says check engine compression with normal operating temperature, all spark plugs removed, throttle blocked open. Uh, and then I need to find the engine. So 1.8, 1.9, 3.5, the Aurora, the Intrigue, 4.0, 4.6. Our engine isn't any of those. So ours fits under this category, all others, which is, has got the little three over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to number three. It says the lowest compression reading should be not less than 70% of the highest compression reading. Uh, no cylinder compression reading should be less than uh, 100 PSI. So that's the only specs we have on it. Um, so let's take a look and see what we got. So I wrote down all the cylinder specifications right here. So cylinder number one had 180. That's one you watched me do. And when I did the rest of them, these are what I come up with. So cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four, five, and six. So my lowest cylinder was, or sorry, 178, which is cylinder number three. My highest cylinder was cylinder 180, or was 182 psi, and that was cylinder number two. So two was the highest, three was the lowest. The difference between those, the average between those, is about 97%. So that fits within our specifications. I also went ahead and totaled them all up and our total was uh, 1,079. And if you divide that by the number of cylinders, that gives us an average uh, PSI of about 179.8 uh, compression. So this engine actually is a really good engine um, for uh, uh, compression goes. Now, if we had something different, if we had say uh, this low cylinder right here, if it was, we'll say 99% um, or 99 PSI. And I'm not sure you can see that on the board, so I'm just gonna write over it in black. So if that was 99 PSI in cylinder number three, um, that would obviously be a little bit too low. Um, it's just right there uh, just barely under the mark because uh, the service information said that we had to have at least 100 PSI and uh, this one has 99. So one of the things we would tell our customers is uh, say, hey, you got one cylinder that's just barely below specification. It may be okay. It probably isn't. Uh, but one of the things we need to do to check this to see where the problem is is we can do a wet compression test. So I'm going to show you how to do a wet compression test now. So that was cylinder number three that had the, the hypothetically had the low compression. So cylinder one, two, and three, or actually one, three, and five. So it'd be cylinder number here. So that, that cylinder there. So cylinder number three is going to be a little bit low on compression. So to do a wet compression test would be just take a little bit of oil and take the oil and you just squirt it down inside the cylinder. And it just takes a couple of squirts of oil to go down in the cylinder. And then we're going to do the compression test again. What that does is the oil goes down around the cylinder and it's going to coat the compression rings. Remember the rings that I showed you on the piston a few days ago or in the other video? Um, if the rings are bad, then that, compress or that oil will help seal the rings and the compression will come way up. If you don't see a change in the compression after we squirted a little bit of oil in the cylinder, then it's going to be in the valves. So you might have a valve issue is to the reason that you have low compression. So with a cylinder um, wet compression test like that, you can determine is it uh, rings, or in other words, is it lower end problem, or is it valves, which is the upper end problem, the cylinder head. So that concludes the compression test. We've done a static compression test and a uh, wet compression test. So uh, stay tuned for another video on uh, dynamic compression testing and also cylinder leakage testing.